Greetings. Uh, this is an Across in Miracles video, and <clears throat> I have absolutely no idea what it's about. <laughs> I thought I would just spontaneously come out and make myself available and sit here and see what happens. <laughs> so. <coughs> Holy Spirit, what shall I talk about? Uh, fear. Okay, so... <laughs> what can we say? What can we say about fear? Let's see. Fear is a choice. Um... Like every ego illusion, fear seems to be a thing, like it's a finite thing, and when you're experiencing fear, you're in this state, and it's like, it's a, an experience, and this is the, the place that I'm at, and this is how I feel, and this is what I'm experiencing, and so it seems like this is the problem, and I'm having this fear, and I'm afraid of this, and so on. But, this secretly is a lie, because fear is actually the consequence, Holy Spirit says, fear is the consequence of steps that came before the fear. Fear is actually an effect, it's an effect of guilt. <clears throat> if you can um, take this simple idea that if somebody's innocent, and they have not sinned, and they haven't done anything wrong, they don't have any reason to be afraid, because all fear is actually a fear of punishment, uh, retribution, or some kind of uh, revenge or consequences that are going to happen because of something that you've done. Um, and many people believe that stuff just happens on its own, and therefore fear is not just a consequence of something that you did, it's, it's, it's something that you're having about random stuff. <laughs> um, there's a fire that showed up in the field and now I'm getting afraid. Seems like you didn't choose anything to do with that, it doesn't have anything to do with your guilt, but it actually does. Underneath all fear there's always guilt because you start off believing that you sinned, the sin automatically implies that it's true of you that you are sinful, therefore you're justified in being guilty. <clears throat> the guilt tells you that you're the one that did it, and therefore you're worthy of being punished. You agree with the guilt and say, yes, I am guilty, and, and that automatically means you're not going to prevent yourself from being attacked. Um, you're actually going to agree with whatever form of punishment comes from it, and you're going to say, yes, I think I do deserve to be punished. Um, and then you will become afraid. And you're actually afraid of not so much to do with what's going to happen to you, but you're afraid because you yourself believe that you deserve to be punished. So regardless of what anybody else is going to do to you, or what's going to happen, or come from this sin, the core problem is that you actually are now against yourself. You are planning to hurt yourself in order to get um, the due consequence of what you did. You're, you're not just agreeing with somebody to come along and hurt you for you, you're actually asking for them to do so, and in effect, because your mind goes outside of yourself and you project this fear out, and your own will now is attacking you from the outside in, sort of indirectly, you will orchestrate people to come along and hurt you in order to fulfill the belief that you have that you should be punished. and. So it's not just, okay, I'm scared of that person, I'm scared of this thing happening. It's actually, in some way, it has to be, I'm only scared because I'm scared of myself. 
I'm only scared because I believe that I should be punished for having done something wrong. And therefore, because I have decided that I'm going to punish myself and that I deserve it, and I'm not worthy of forgiveness, that automatically is going to sort of terrify yourself, terrorize yourself, and no matter what is happening outside of you, you you're going to have this state of fear come out of it because you feel undermined by your own self, like you're self-sabotaging and you're becoming suicidal. You're getting into like a, a belief system of that you're going to hurt yourself. And so that's the core root of all fear is your belief that you deserve to be punished. And <clears throat> so then the fear starts expressing and then you start to see uh, it sort of taking shape and manifesting and, and somebody comes along to kind of fill the role that you're asking for. And you start worrying about um, what someone's going to do to you and, and the form that the punishment's going to take. And in the, I've, I've sinned in the past, so now I'm guilty and I'm afraid of the future. The future's going to bring the punishment to, to atone for or pay for the sin. <clears throat> So then you start getting lost in the story of what's going to happen and how it's going to happen. And then before you know it, it starts kind of happening because you're actually willing it to happen. You're choosing it and wanting it. So you're saying, yes, okay, I'm going to make this happen to myself. And you actually, your mind actually then kind of goes out there and, and arranges punishments, brings people to you that can enact what you are trying to do to yourself, uh, and then the abusers show up or hurtful people show up because you're being hurtful to yourself and, and you're actually kind of resonating with what they're doing. You're saying, okay, I give you permission to come hurt me. Uh, and and because you're giving that permission, it, it makes you really scared that not not just that they're going to do something of their free will and they're going to say, I, I'm just randomly picking you out as a victim, but rather that on top of that and behind that, you actually believe that you should be attacked and that you want it and you deserve it. And so you can't help but be scared because you're scaring yourself by believing that you're so guilty that you should be punished. So behind the fear, even though the fear says, I'm afraid because of that, or I'm afraid of that, or I'm scared that this person's going to do this, or I'm, I'm worried about that happening, it's fear of the punishment. <clears throat> it seems specific seems to be about something else other than yourself, other than the fear. And then that reverses your perception and now you start looking at it as though those people are the problem and that event is the problem and the thing that's going to happen is the problem and I just want to get away from that. But that's not the problem. That's, that's the result of the procession from sin to guilt to fear and now you're starting to your perception is becoming so twisted that you start looking at this fear as if it's not coming out of you and you didn't put it there, as if other people are putting it there. They're causing me to be scared. I'm scared of them. They're making me scared and afraid. They're doing something to me against my will. And that's a lie. It's not true. But the state of fear produces that way of perceiving especially when it gets more advanced, your perception flips around and you really start to look at it in terms of I don't have any power, they have all the power uh, and I can't do anything to stop them. It's like they turn into the cause, you turn into the effect because you're not seeing how you're causing the fear 
and then you start to think, okay, they cause this, so they're making me afraid, and I'm afraid of them, so they must be the problem. They must be the source of the fear. It's absolutely the reverse of the truth. They are not the source of the fear. The source of the fear is your guilt. The source is in you. The source is the co the chain of cause causes and effects that goes separation, sin, guilt, fear, punishment, death. All a, all a logical procession of steps that come out of you that are your choices and that you do to yourself. And the effects of that on your perception are that your perception twists around and you start perceiving backwards as if things that aren't in your hands or things you didn't choose and things you don't want and haven't had a say in and now the things that have that, that are causing what you're experiencing and making you scared and it's a total reversal it's your mind is not perceiving in the correct direction you've got level confusion because now you flipped around cause out cause and effect the higher level is causing the lower level of the fear the guilt is causing the fear, but now you start thinking that the punisher is causing the fear when really the fear is producing the punishment. So <clears throat> so then you have to sort of correct this and look at it and see, I'm not afraid of that person. They're not the cause of the fear. The fear is not coming from them. I haven't been made scared by what's going to happen to me. Um, I can't be affected against my will. And to sort of take back the ownership of the fear, that the fear isn't being caused by something outside you, it's coming from inside, from a different direction. <coughs> so... Um, that means you got to get to where you can see that the fear has been causing the punishment and all of the perceptions of the punishment happening to you and, and making you the fear, causing the fear, that has to be reversed. So, okay, that's not causing the fear, that's an effect of the fear. These people and these events in the future are the effect of my being scared that puts the fear back in its rightful place as the cause of that. That's one layer, you gotta, you gotta erase that layer and correct that layer of thinking, that delusion. <clears throat> now you're in another step where you can see that the fear was causing the, the drama and the, the worries and the obsession about what someone's gonna do to you. If you can get all that back and get now you've got a hold of the fear is causing this the fear is not caused by anything else except guilt <clears throat> now you need to question is this fear actually a cause does it have the power to make me punished should the consequences of my sin really proceed all the way through guilt to fear to punishment to death um, <clears throat> is this fear really a cause? Or could it be that this fear is actually an effect of another cause that's been hidden? <clears throat> and then what you find out is that the fear was actually made to make your guilt go unconscious. So you're in a state of guilt and you don't like it because it feels shit and you want to get rid of this guilt but you don't really want to remove it because you don't believe you deserve to have it removed and, it, and you think it's justified and so you keep it but then you cover it over with a you create kind of a shield a layer of denial which paints a picture of you being innocent this is fake innocence <clears throat> you cover up your guilt by disowning the guilt, which gets projected, and portraying yourself as a helpless, weak, innocent victim, like a little baby who is 
completely incapable of preventing or causing a sin. <laughs> it portrays you as this innocent person who didn't choose this and isn't the one that sinned and isn't the one that has caused guilt. And that now you're being attacked unfairly by unjustified attackers who you didn't ask to attack you, but you really did. So when you're in the guilt, you use fear to make the guilt unconscious to yourself and block it. Because if you can position yourself as, I did not want to cause this to happen, I didn't really want to sin, which is a lie, you did want to sin, um, <clears throat> it makes the guilt unconscious, covers it over with a veneer of... of people pleasing and I'm innocent and I didn't ask for any of this and basically the the potential of being victimized and then uh, whatever comes along and does something to you it's like oh I didn't ask for this I'm not the one who sinned they must obviously be the sinner this is how you deflected away the belief that you did sin and now you've put it onto somebody else and you see yourself as not the sinner that's the whole that's the whole basis of all fear is that you're in denial of believing that you're guilty unconsciously you believe you are guilty and that you deserve punishment and now you're experiencing a state of mind where you're not aware of the guilt you're only aware of the fear that has come from this unconscious self attack this death wish that you've created this desire to be hurt and punished that's unconsciously in you and it's starting to make stuff happen to you. Um, the purpose of fear is to hide guilt. So it hides it by making fear look like fear is the cause of punishment. The experience of the fear is always sort of this I didn't want this, I didn't ask for this, this is unfair, this is against my will, why are you doing this to me, I'm innocent. It's the basis of all the fear, because it's a disowning, it's an irresponsibility. Um, and if you buy into that, you, you fall into the trap of thinking that I'm only afraid because of what someone else is doing. They're the sinner, they're the, the evil cause who has done something and now they're going to attack me of their own free will and I didn't ask for it. And then you develop grievances based on that, the whole dynamic of I'm justified in being angry because I didn't want this. But you did, anger's never justified. So... You've got to recognize somehow at some point that the fear is not the cause of anything. It is not a, not a power. It doesn't cause punishment. It's not going to bring you suffering. Uh, it's not being caused by anything else. It's just this sort of the state. And this state of mind, if it's not causing anything, can't be anything other than an effect. So if fear is just an effect, that implies automatically that it's being caused by the step that came before, which was the unconscious guilt. And that implication, if you can really collapse down the fear and get to where you, you don't believe that you should be afraid, you don't believe that anything is causing the fear outside of you, the fear doesn't have any causes that you can be aware of. There's, you sort of strip away all the stories about what's causing it. You, you stop believing all those lies about that thing causing the fear. I'm afraid because of that. I'm afraid because this will happen. Unbelieve all that shit, all those lies. All you've got left is like you're holding on to this fear and, you're, and, and now you recognize it doesn't seem to have a cause, so where did it come from? It didn't come from all these people, it didn't come from the punishers, it didn't come from the world. So 
where did it come from? And then, you, then you're sort of investigating and you're looking around for where, what is the cause of this? Well, if it's not being caused by anything else, that starts making you realize fear is an effect. It must be an effect of something. Maybe that something is actually uh, hidden behind the fear. Maybe the fear came from something else. What, where did the fear come from? And then you, your mind is then able to sort of tap into, sort of uh, <clears throat> explore and feel out and become aware of the guilt that has been unconscious. And you actually sometimes, quite often you can find that if you do this well, the guilt that was unconscious returns to your awareness. You become aware that you are feeling guilty. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, underneath this fear I feel guilty about something. And I feel terrible and I feel ashamed or I feel like I've done something terribly wrong and I don't deserve to be forgiven. That comes back into your awareness because now you've removed the denial this block to awareness, this belief that you weren't guilty. That's the whole point of the fear was to create this state where you're experiencing it as though you're not the one that's guilty and you're innocent and, and vulnerable. If you so you're sort of reclaiming the, the responsibility that Yes, I actually do feel guilty, and there's a guilt underneath this fear. I think that I've done something, and <clears throat> as soon as you do that, as soon as you sort of tap into that guilt, you will find all of a sudden that all the fear disappears. Because just as anger is actually a... Uh, more projected form of fear. Anybody who gets angry does so because they perceive themselves as a fearful victim. The anger becomes justified because they think that someone else is causing the fear. <clears throat> or somebody's punishing you against your will. If you can recognize what happens there, it's that the the sense of being afraid of being punished by something else um, justifies, since you are so innocent, justifies that, oh, I didn't ask for this, so therefore I should be angry because this is unfair. This That means it's unasked for and I didn't want this, so what the fuck are you doing attacking me? I should be angry. Then it, then it seems like it makes sense that you should be angry, and yet that anger is not justified. Anger is never justified because it always comes from a misperception and a block to awareness where you're not aware of what you're doing to yourself. You're not aware that you believe you sinned, you believe that you became guilty, and now you believe that you need to have fear in order to protect you from the guilt hide the guilt and make it seem like you didn't sin so that you can get rid of the sin onto somebody else. So, <clears throat> so if you can get past the illusion of the fear, which is a lie, it's telling a, a story that's dishonest, where you want to be punished, underneath the fear you want to be punished because you believe you're guilty, you tap back into the guilt and the guilt comes back into your awareness and now you can deal with it. So now you've got a choice, either as you did before, either I'm going to suppress this guilt and try to make it go away and hide it and block it and um, pretend that I'm not guilty and cover it up with innocence, a, a fake facade or a persona of innocence and shove it into my unconscious and make it into my shadow. Either you do that, or you consider the possibility that the guilt also is kind of doing the same thing that the fear was doing. It's finding reasons other than itself for what caused it. 
I'm guilty because that person says so, and I'm guilty because God finds me guilty, and I'm guilty because of what I did, and blah, blah, blah. You now have all these other stories that you've woven about why you became guilty, other than that you believe that you sinned. <clears throat> so you project, you've projected all these, the responsibility for the guilt and the choosing of the guilt, onto other things, other causes. It's not, it's like, okay, I'm guilty because anybody else would find me guilty in this situation, or I should be ashamed because I did hurt this person and, and they're justified in being angry at me, or um, God's decided that I don't deserve love because of what I did, or whatever it is. Somebody else choosing the guilt for you, that's all a lie. It's, an, it's another layer of lies. <coughs> deflections, uh, denials, and projections of the causality of the guilt. So, <clears throat> so at some point then you have to realize that the guilt is not causing fear, <clears throat> the guilt is not going to cause punishment, the guilt is not causing anything, it's not being caused by anything else other than sin. All guilt comes from sin. You've got to wipe away the belief in any other causes of this guilt or any other ways that you've become guilty or been decided to be guilty by somebody else. They're all lies and cover-ups. It's all dishonesty. It's all projection and disowning of the guilt. You take back all of the... all those fake causes and now all you've got is you're holding the guilt in your hand and you're saying well it hasn't been caused by any of these things so there must be some kind of hidden cause of this guilt <clears throat> in my mind this guilt must somehow be the effect of something else that came before it <coughs> so now that helps your awareness to now tap into the hidden sin, <laughs> the belief that you sinned, which you covered up with guilt. Anybody that sins wants to sin. Anybody who sins chose to sin, made it happen, wants to believe in the consequences of the sin, believes that it's a permanent sin and it has had real effects and they can't be reversed and that you wanted this to happen. And when guilt comes along as a way to, to further deny the truth, because sin hasn't happened, it's a lie, the guilt's put in place as another screen of denial and making the sin unconscious outside of your awareness, and so now you're only looking at guilt. The purpose of the guilt is to make it seem as though you are remorseful and you didn't want to sin and uh, you didn't really choose it. It was some kind of mistake and you take it back if you could and you wish it hadn't happened and now you're feeling ashamed and guilty and acting small like you're some kind of little victim that didn't want this and didn't choose it and oh, it's so horrible, I wish I could undo the sin while keeping the sin because you don't really want to undo it, you you totally believe in it underneath. <clears throat> and that's the beginning of that whole procession from I did this to I didn't do this. It's denial, denial, denial. Every step of the way is, is the same kind of denial of responsibility. So the guilt actually is fake. The guilt is not genuine, and you don't genuinely believe that you didn't want to sin. You don't genuinely believe that it happened against your will, or you didn't choose it, or you didn't want it. If you look at the guilt, and you look at the sense of unworthiness and shame, it's actually a device for blocking the undoing of sin. It's an attempt to keep the sin, hide it, you know, secret sins and hidden hates, and not fix it, but then to put on a show about how how you didn't really want it and you didn't really choose it, to disown it, to disown responsibility so that it stays hidden and stays intact and is not undone 
and and you'll make a great big drama story about why you can't undo it and how much you want to undo it and how much you feel guilty as if you have every desire in the world to want to have not sinned it's bullshit it's total bullshit you're li it's a lie <laughs> It's designed to portray you as if you didn't want it, as if you hadn't chosen. Because that then keeps the sin in, in place. If you're not going to ever go look at the sin and say, I did choose this, I did want it. <coughs> All of this, I didn't choose it, I don't want it, is actually an unwillingness to go back to the sin and look at it and say, yes, I actually did choose this and I I do believe in it and I do think it's real and I did want it. So in the same way <coughs> as undoing fear and realizing there's guilt behind it, you got to undo all the beliefs that the guilt is causing anything. The guilt's just an effect. The guilt is an effect of a belief in sin. Uh, all guilt comes from the belief in sin. Therefore, the guilt is only an effect, not a cause. Therefore, it doesn't really exist. And your mind then can sort of open up its awareness and become aware again of the stuff that you made unconscious by being guilty. The sin comes back into your awareness and it's not pretty. <laughs> it's, it can be quite horrible. It can, it can be kind of a death wish and you got to be kind of careful with how you handle it with Holy Spirit. Because <clears throat> it seems as though it's true. And it seems as though you really did want to hurt God. And you really did want to sin. Um, but then you have to go past that level as well in the same way. By recognizing there is no other cause of this sin it was something you chose you're responsible and the sin is actually blocking something the sin is another layer of denial that has made something else unconscious there's something behind the sin the sin is a layer of of fakery and denial and pretense that says I really am separate from God it can't be reversed can't be undone you better not go back the other way don't ever even bother trying to fix it or heal it because it can't be changed. <clears throat> Sin is real. I really have done something to God and God's been hurt and changed and it can't be undone or fixed and now God must therefore hate me. And then... <clears throat> because the sin says that you really did hurt God, that automatically means you believe God is justified in being pissed at you, <clears throat> that he's worthy of or he's justified in getting revenge because you agree that he is enraged and hurt and believe that he's been damaged and that therefore he must be justified in having been unfairly attacked, he was innocent, and now you attacked him against his will. Therefore, he should want to hurt you in return, and now anger, anger from God becomes justified. You see that as, as God's wrath, that God is going to want to hurt you, and that therefore you can't go back to God because you don't think he can forgive you. Your only other choice is to go towards death, to, you might as well just go off on your own and suffer and feel guilty and unworthy and become afraid and get punished and die because you see that as the only option because of this sin and that's that's where the death wish is created it's the the wish and the desire to be dead because you think you deserve it <clears throat> And that's got to be uprooted and totally undone because it is deadly if it's real. So, <clears throat> so what is it that's behind the sin? What is the sin blocking? What does sin deny? How, how is it that sin is not a cause? 
sin is not causing me to be guilty because I have not really sinned. Sin does not really produce any effects or consequences. If sin is not a cause, it cannot have produced any real damage. It cannot have hurt God. Nothing can have been affected. Therefore, it hasn't really done anything in reality. This, this now opens your mind up past the sin back to the state that's behind the sin. The state behind the sin is your perfect innocence. It is the atonement. It is God. It is his mind, the truth about you that you can't have sinned and the idea of having sinned was a total lie. It was a form of denial. It was a cover-up story. It was a way of pretending that you really could <clears throat> do something to affect reality and that you had hurt God and changed reality. And it's evidently not true, because sin does not cause real effects. All sin takes place within a dream, not in reality. It has not caused consequences. There isn't going to be punishment, guilt, deaths, and murder, and whatever coming from it. All those other steps have been collapsed and undone and unbelieved in. Now you're unbelieving that you've even sinned at all. <clears throat> you have not really sinned. It hasn't taken place in reality. Um, you can't affect God. You have not affected God. God is totally unchanged. The sin hasn't done anything. Therefore the sin can't be a, a cause all it is is an effect. If it's an effect, cause is behind it. True cause is, is God. The effect now disappears and your mind returns to an awareness of God, an awareness of the atonement and the truth. You wake up to atonement. You, you're now accepting because you've undone all these other beliefs. You don't know any, any longer believe that you did sin. You don't believe the sin has caused anything. You don't believe the guilt caused any sin, anything. You don't believe the fear is going to cause anything. You don't believe punishment's deserved. All of those were reasons why you didn't want to accept atonement or God's truth. <clears throat> So if you don't have any reasons left as to why not, why you shouldn't accept that it must still be true that you're innocent, then you will accept atonement. You will accept the truth behind the sin that there has not been a sin. There is no real sin. Nothing's happened. You are still innocent because your innocence has not been defiled by a sin. You did not commit a crime. You have not hurt God. You have not changed who you are. Therefore, you must still be as God created you. I am still as God created me is an atonement statement. I, I must still be as God created me because all this other stuff was lies and denials and bullshit. None of it was true. The only truth is that, you know, the only sense that is left to make if you haven't sinned and your innocence hasn't changed is that you must still be innocent. Therefore, you're worthy of being loved by God. You still must be the way he created you. You can't have changed. Nothing's happened. <sighs> And now, because you're willing to accept that is the truth, there is no sin, you are still innocent. Your acceptance and your willingness and the freedom that you have to believe that it's true and, and to have no objections to it allows you now to be willing to see just how worthy you are, how worthy God finds you, how much you deserve to be loved, and now you receive love. You allow yourself to receive God. This receives a healing miracle. And now you are equipped with miraculousness 
to be able to give that same truth, that same belief, that same <clears throat> atoned part of your mind, that same healed self, you can share it with other people and thereby give them miracles because you've now received it. So this is <clears throat> this is basically the forgiveness process. You have to go from wherever you're at, even if you're in the, the throngs of fear, in the middle of being punished, you've got to undo all these layers of denial, get rid of all these beliefs in, in what's causing these layers that are false, recognize that each step was, a, was an effect of the previous step only, and there are no other causes of it, Fear is an effect of guilt. Guilt is an effect of sin. And sin is an effect of nothing because it hasn't been caused. The only, real, the only real cause behind all of this ego illusion is God. <clears throat> You've got to go all the way to that point. All the way past these beliefs beliefs in punishment and death, beliefs in fear, beliefs in guilt, beliefs in sin, then you end up with all that's left is your innocent self. <clears throat> the state where you haven't done anything and you recognize it and you can accept it and then you can receive God's truth. And it's at that point where you are choosing between I have sinned, or I have not sinned. That is the only choice you have between two thought systems. If you choose that you've sinned, you've chosen the whole ego, all of the steps that come after it as well, sin and guilt and death and fear and punishment and sickness. If you don't choose to believe in sin, or you believe in God, you're choosing his thought system at that point so the only real choice you have is at the point of accepting atonement. Either you're you're in the ego somewhere, <laughs> or you're 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 switching back over to God's mind. That is the only real choice you have. And once you do choose it, you are willing to receive it. You believe it's true of you that you're worthy of love. Now you must also believe other people must be worthy of love too, and they just aren't realizing it. And now you want to help them realize it and you heal them and you give miracles and you help them to awaken you become part of the atonement plan and now you want to go um, <clears throat> join the great crusade to help your brothers this is how it works this is how it's set up so if you're doing a forgiveness process and you don't take it all the way to the atonement on any given issue if you <coughs> <coughs> if you do <coughs> the forgiveness and you, and you undo some fear but you don't get past the guilt or you undo some guilt but you don't really get past the sin and you've still got denial and blocks in your awareness and you haven't become aware of your innocence and all these other beliefs haven't been totally gotten rid of. You have not finished your forgiveness. It's not a complete forgiveness. And a lot of people are doing this where they're only doing like the first step. Taking back some projections or undoing a bit of fear and guilt. You've got to go through the whole thing to get to the mind of forgiveness. Which is the Holy Spirit's thought system. It's the atonement go all the way there and you can do this on any issue it doesn't have to be the that you're accepting the full atonement forever and being done with the dreaming you can do it on an individual issue and go get an individual miracle um, <clears throat> and when I did this for the first time Jesus said to me now you will be able to perform miracles and that was after 15 years of trying to apply forgiveness and not taking it all the way to atonement and dealing with the kind of the further down the line consequences of sin and guilt, trying to undo sort of the 
the second and th third time removed issues that were still covering up underlying sin beliefs, you've got to take your forgiveness process all the way to atonement, all the way to, I can see no reason why it's true of me that I'm sinful. I can only see that it makes sense that I must still be innocent because nothing's really happened in reality. That is the completion of forgiveness. That is where you get healed. That's where you receive miracles. <clears throat> and you give the miracles you've received. Um, and it all started with fear. <laughs> you had this fear and you thought, oh, I'm afraid of something and such and such happening to me. And you think that's the problem. It's not even remotely the problem. That's a, it's, it's three or four times removed from the real problem, the separation idea. You've got all these layers of denial that have to be undone. You have to undo belief in punishment, belief in fear, belief in guilt, belief in sin. Then your mind is getting to where it's healed. And that's the point at which you're, you're choosing between ego and God. Um, that's the point at which you can accept it. You can't accept it while you have these other beliefs. If you still believe sin and guilt, and you try to accept atonement truth, you'll be like, well, it sort of makes sense, but... And something else will kind of pull, kind of nag at you and pull you back and make you feel like there's something not right about this truth. I don't quite believe it. I don't buy it. <laughs> You won't be able to accept it and let, until you have fully let go of all these other layers of belief in the ego stuff. All the sin and the guilt and the fear has to be no longer believed in. Otherwise, you're putting your faith in the ego and you need to get all of your faith in one place, in one state, to be able to say... I have. I, I see no other no other truth. It simply makes sense that I, since I haven't sinned in reality, I must be still innocent. And having no other possible way that you can see any reason why not, you simply will say, "I I have to simply accept this. This is so true. It's so clear and obvious. If I don't believe in the sin, then I I must still be innocent. I must still be the way God created me." And then you, you open up your awareness and you have an experience of God loving you. You have a, a revelation or a, a sort of a moment of feeling peace or often, you, often you'll laugh your head off <laughs> or you'll cry or have tears of joy. And sometimes I've heard myself say, I'm free. Like a little inner voice will say, I'm free. And... <clears throat> um, it's a relief, it's an extreme relief to finally accept that you are not sinful and that it's true that you're still innocent and God hasn't changed his mind about you and he still loves you. It's like, oh, thank God, fuck. Oh my God, that's so amazing. Uh, I am so grateful. It's like... It makes you cry tears of happiness because you all the, all along you thought that you could never go back and you could never get forgiven. You wouldn't be loved again and you might as well just die. And now you're finding out that's not true. And the terrible thing you thought you did, you didn't even do it. God doesn't even think you've done anything. And it's true that you have not done anything. In reality, all you've done is dream. All you've done is make up some lies. God's not been hurt. You haven't changed. Heaven has not changed one bit. There hasn't been any effects. The kingdom is still intact. Nothing's been upset. God's not angry. It's like, ah, oh, what a relief. What a joy. <laughs> and then you receive. This is where you receive. You say, I, I now can receive love. I can let myself receive, and that receiving is how you get healed, it's how you get miracles, it's how your body suddenly becomes healed. 
your willingness to let God heal you and let God bless you with love that you weren't allowing before. You were sort of saying no. You were keeping it away with your belief in sin, saying you don't want it. And now you're saying, I do want it. And that opens you up to, to connect to God. And now you get miracles and you get healing. This is, this is the undoing of ego. This is the doorway to heaven. So I think I'm going to um, finish up there. I have to get back. So <clears throat> uh, spontaneous topic. Today's topic was fear. We ended up in the atonement. So something good must have happened. So God bless and receive God's love. And know that you are innocent. See ya.